Hey everyone, this is James Patrick with Slam Academy. I just had a really fun idea and question, more like a question that inspired an idea, as usually my ideas are inspired by student questions. This one has to do with physical modeling. And oftentimes I really like to get under the hood and have a deep understanding of what's going on inside of an instrument, so then I can not only use it, but maybe come up with my own ways to use it or design it better. For instance, the collision here is one of my favorite instruments in live, and like all physical modeling instruments, it's based on a simple principle. The principle is you've got a sound generator, which is called an excitator, which you can't actually usually hear. All it's doing is providing an impact or some vibration or some stimulation to something that actually is audible, in this case, a material. Physical modeling is we're modeling literally through an algorithm a physical material and in sound's case how that physical material resonates. Obviously wood resonates differently than rubber and so we've calculated and quantified these physical materials into algorithms that you can choose here. But of course a beam or a piece of rubber doesn't make sound on its own. You have to whack it with something. So in the case of the collision, they give you two different generators, or again, excitators. The mallet here is what you're holding in your hand, and this is a specific model that you can velocity or key track um, to make it do cool things as you play on the keyboard. This is really the kind of the musical application, and it's kind of a specific model that's designed to feel kind of like a marimba or a vibraphone. Otherwise, I can use the noise generator. So just to show you how this works is I can... Go ahead and if I have the model turned pretty much off, which is what that does, I can hear a white noise. I'll get a little pluck here. If I want it to be like a bow, and you're like, that doesn't really sound like a bow yet until I put in the string model. So you can hear now how that works, right? So you've got a noise generator and a physically modeled resonant body. So here's my idea. That noise generator in there is a little wimpy. I want to be able to stimulate my resonant body with things that are tonal and not just noise. So luckily the Applied Acoustic Systems designers in collaboration with Ableton not only came up with that collision device but they also came up with a little audio effect called the corpus. The corpus is essentially just the resonant body without the excitator. So as you can see, what I've done here is I've replaced the excitator with an operator. I can even switch this to white noise, and now we're essentially doing the exact same thing we were doing before. Oops, string. Let's go with a bow shape. Make sure that dry wet mix is all the way up so we only hear that here we'll start like this. But there's a problem with this. Listen to what happens when I play C major. I just played C major on my keyboard. Hmm. Again, thankfully, the designers at Applied Acoustic Systems and the boys at Ableton collaborated to come up with some pretty cool tools here in the corpus. One in particular is a really unique function only to the corpus inside of Ableton, and this is an audio effect that can MIDI sidechain. So I might have had a bunch of tracks in my session, but I really just want to sidechain the MIDI from itself. So what I've done here is I've kind of grabbed a patch cable and I've taken the MIDI that's going into the operator and I've patched it on in over the operator into the audio effect, and I'm now frequency tracking, which is this transpose knob. Notice it was pitch. <laughs> Now, here's that C major. Cool, huh? So now, look. Physically modeled excitator. Watch when I try some different models. I can even have the gate work too. So if I put on off decay, the more I turn this up, the more it will stop when I let go of a note. So mind you, this is still white noise. Pretty cool sounding though. 
now we're actually stimulating this with a sine wave. Or what if I did a square wave? Amazing, right? I'm loving it. So this is now a DIY physically modeled resonator. Kind of like a part two to our recent DIY resonators video we did just with bandpass filters and delays, which still is kind of what's happening under the hood of these models, but this is much more complex math, thus able to evoke much more complex tones. Listen to this. Turn on my key tracking on my synth. That's pretty tight. You could even envelope it. So yeah, this is a physically modeled resonator, and I love it. It's a fine mod jam here. We can have so much fun with this. Generally, I like keeping it plucky, because that allows me to really just hear the tube. So to top this thing off completely, I can hit Command-D. Now I have two resonant bodies, and they're in series. I can now hold shift, and I can group these together. And I can map some macros. What I'd probably do is do attack and decay of my resonator, or I'm sorry, of my excitator. It's just excitator stuff, so I'll make it like that color, kind of boring. Now I want to attack and decay of my resonators. In fact, not attack, because that's always happening. Let's do pitch and decay. I'm going to go down to the lower row, pitch and decay. Pitch and decay. Okay, I guess I can retype that. And this one, since it's a little more important, I'm going to make it a little more bright. You know what I might do? I could even have not mapping the tuning to the first one and only the second to add harmony. I could also add a dry wet mix for the second resonator. I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna have dry wet mix, mix for resonator two and transpose for resonator two on its own macro. So resonator two, I'm gonna go with like orange. There you go. So this is pitch of resonator two. Pitch two, this is pitch one, just so we know which one is which. I've oh, got some nice harmonies. Nice, huh? So now let's, um, last but not least, we could do our radius of our materials. We could also change the models. Let's go ahead and change the models up. Let's go model selection, beam, model selection, beam. So now we have model one, model two. So model one would be yellow and model two would be orange, right? I'm gonna go ahead and call this my DIY Fi Modeler. So there you have it. Build your own physical modeling resonator. Quite a bit of fun. We've got two resonant bodies and a total gem we can have now just from the top of the macros with our pusher, our APC. Try it out. Make it cooler. Send me a link, jp at slamacademy.com. All we do is make music and have fun, so hit us up online. We've got full programs in sound design, Ableton Live, DJing, and all those sorts of exciting electronic music and art-related topics.
looking forward to hearing from you. Thanks a lot.